A very warm welcome to one and all on behalf of Sporties and also for Flight. Uh, my name is Eric Radke. I lead the educational team at Sporties, and I am delighted to also welcome with us this evening Mr. Ryan McBride, lead product designer at ForeFlight, and one of the many talented pilots and scientists that bring us all this magic. Uh, ForeFlight continues to innovate. They continue to make us more informed, more capable pilots, and haven't had a whole lot going on lately other than, uh, as you've probably all heard, Four Flight is now a Boeing company. That news was out just a few weeks ago. And also, just this week, timing is perfect, uh, announced version 11.2 of the app and also introduced a new passenger app, which I know Ryan is going to uh, talk about a little more in depth. Before I get too much further, I want to offer a big thank you to Sporty's Pilot Shop for its sponsorship of the free webinar series. Uh, that Sporty hosts and produces. Um, the programming, if you've been with us before, you know it's a mix of product, technology, proficiency, and right in the middle of that triangle uh, couldn't fit more perfectly, of course, is again all that, that magic that comes uh, from the four flight team. So we're happy that you could join us. If uh, you've been with us before, you certainly know that we record all of these presentations and it will be available in our archive and via the Sporties YouTube. So if you have to check out for just a second or uh, miss a specific point, uh, you can come back anytime you'd like and uh, review and review the material as much as you would like. Uh, feel free throughout the presentation to submit any questions that you may have via the GoToWebinar software. We're going to set aside some time uh, toward the end of the presentation to get to some of those questions. Uh, so without further ado, I am very happy to welcome Mr. Ryan McBride. Ryan, thank you for being with us tonight. Hey, thanks, Eric. Hello, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to Four Flight Advanced Tips and Tricks. Uh, as Eric mentioned, uh, my name is Ryan McBride. I lead the product design team at Four Flight. So. My team of product designers is basically responsible for making sure all of the features within ForeFlight Mobile on the mobile application as well as on the, the website, ForeFlight.com, uh, making sure all those features are easy to use and easy to understand. Um, and uh, as you know, we are always shipping new features in ForeFlight, so there's always a ton of tremendous work for our design team um, to keep them busy. This year has been no exception. We've already had a couple major releases this year. And we're going to dive deeper into some of those uh, newer features in this presentation. Uh, before I dive into the features, though, I'd like to do just a brief overview of the company. Um, ForeFlight was founded in 2007. Uh, and that was a very crucial year. That's when the iPhone was introduced. And so we had a very basic mobile application on the iPhone. But it wasn't really until the iPad was introduced in 2010 that the company really took off. We've always prided ourselves on building what we believe are the most elegant, high-performing apps in aviation. And we also pride ourselves on something we call the fanatical pilot support team. Everyone on the support team at ForeFlight is a pilot. Uh, most are instrument rated, CFI, CFII, and they're all ForeFlight experts. And they're a really great resource that comes along with every ForeFlight subscription. If you have questions, comments, concerns, feature requests, that sort of thing, um, that's a great team to talk to. And I'm going to give you some information about how to contact our support team uh, and learn more about uh, various support resources we have towards the end of the presentation. We're proud to say we have been the number one selling aviation app since 2010. So this is a really uh, fun presentation um, to do. We do a variety of different presentations, um, both in video form, uh, in webinars, as well as in-person uh, forums at major events like Sun and Fun, which is actually coming up next week, Oshkosh, those sort of events. But this is a, a unique presentation. This presentation is not going to be a, an introductory course in how to use ForeFlight, meaning I'm not going to be going through um, step by step how to use all of the core features within the application. But rather, in this presentation, I'm going to be focusing on some of the more advanced features, features that after having talked to customers uh, for years, having been at ForeFlight, uh, and understanding how uh, customers are using the product and maybe features that they're not utilizing enough. That's basically what this presentation is about. Um, ForeFlight is designed to be very approachable. Uh, we've tried to make the application as intuitive as possible, but we've layered on a lot of additional functionality, shortcuts, um, power user features. 
that enable some of the more advanced users to accomplish their goals quickly, and whether that's in pre-flight planning, in-flight, post-flight, what have you. And that's what this presentation is going to be about. So if you are maybe new to ForeFlight, um, you've just started using the product, maybe you're not feeling uh, totally confident in using it yet, that's okay. This presentation is still going to be really useful for you. You're going to learn a lot of really interesting shortcuts and tricks on how to use the app. Um, but I'm going to give you some more information at the end of this presentation on some of the courses we have that are uh, catered more towards uh, in introductory users and sort of intermediate users as well. So in this presentation, we're going to focus on three areas. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and shortcuts around planning in ForeFlight. Um, as you know, there's uh, lots and lots of different planning features in the product, um, lots of great ways to plan a route, generate routes, get really accurate time and fuel estimates for your flight. So I'm going to give you some um, tips and tricks in, in that sort of area of the product. We're also going to talk about in-route features. So when you're using the app uh, in a flight, whether that's VFR, IFR, whatever, there's a lot of little shortcuts and tricks that I think are going to help speed up um, the time it takes to accomplish tasks in the product. We're going to talk about that. And of course, there's always something new in For Flight Mobile. Um, this year, 2019, has been no exception to that. We've been shipping at a really, really fast pace, and we anticipate to continue shipping at that fast pace uh, for the rest of the year uh, and long after that. Um, and so we're going to go through lots of the new features um, that have been recently introduced, some of which I'm very excited to show you and were just released, actually, uh, this past week. So let's talk about planning first. Um, specifically around planning, I'd like to talk about what we call route bubble entry. So when you're planning a flight in For Flight Mobile, um, you're generally planning this flight either on the Flights tab or on the Maps tab, which is what's on screen here. And in the, this Maps tab, we have the Flight Plan drawer, which kind of slides down when you tap that FPL button. And there's a big field here where it says, tap here to create a route. And if you've been using ForeFlight for a while, you know that you can basically start typing your uh, route bubbles in just like you would type words in a sentence. And so you can fill out a route just like that. But what a lot of people don't know is they can type a lot more than just route waypoints into this field. There's lots of different types of interesting formats uh, and, and, and um, different types of information that you can enter into this field to save you time. A really uh, basic example of that is what we call the radial DME entry. So uh, a common example of this is when you're departing an airport, maybe IFR, and um, you are cleared to um, a, a VOR at a, a radial and a, and a DME. You can actually enter this as a waypoint directly through the same flight plan drawer as you would enter any normal waypoint. There's just a, a specific syntax that you need to use, and it's very simple once you do it the first time. Uh, if I wanted to plot a radial DME waypoint off of this HZN VOR, which is on the right side of the screen there, uh, after I've departed Reno. All I need to do is type the identifier for the VOR, so that's HZN, and then I can do a slash, and then I can put in the radial that's uh, coming off of that uh, VOR, and then I can put another slash, and then I can put the distance, in this case, 200 uh, radial at uh, 15 DME. And if I hit the space bar or the enter, the return key on my keyboard, uh, you'll see two things happen. I get a little bubble up in the top, it's filled in, and this means whenever you see a color in the bubble, uh, that means four flights recognize this. This is a valid waypoint. If it wasn't a valid waypoint, you would it would be red and you would get an error. Um, but we can also see on the map that it's plotted that radial DME for me right there. So it's created basically a synthetic waypoint for us. So we can take this one step further and we can actually do radial intersections as well. So uh, as a basic example, if I wanted to plot um, an intersection between radials coming off of two different VORs, uh, I could do that using a very similar syntax. So I would take the first VOR, which in this case we'll say is the, the VOR to the, uh, the southwest of Reno there, SWR. So I'll, I'll type SWR, and then I'll, I'll do the, the radial. No slash, just the radial. In this case, we'll go for the 090 radial. And then I'll do the slash. And after that, I'll do the second VOR, HZN, and then the radial off of HZN, which is, in this case, 210. And then, again, I'll hit the space bar or the return key on my keyboard. And when I do that, I get the, the bubble up at the top, tells me it's valid. And I also get the uh, intersection there between those two radials right on the map. So those are two basic uh, ways of entering um, radial and, and, and DME waypoints. But there's other types of information um, beyond that that we can enter into our flight plan drawer. 
I'd like to talk about uh, two basic types that might save you a little time. Uh, we can enter tail numbers in the flight plan drawer. So up in the top left-hand corner of the flight plan drawer uh, is a button. Um, and it, it, in this case, it has my, my active tail number, November 544 Juliet Bravo. I could open that button up and select a different tail number in the system from there. Or if I knew the tail number, I don't want to have to go through the menus, I could just type it right in to the flight plan drawer. And when I hit enter on my keyboard, ForeFlight then fills in the bubble, and you can see my tail number in the button on the left has changed to the, the new tail number that I entered. So it's going to use this aircraft now to, to compute time and fuel estimates for the route that I'm planning. And all of my, na my uh, nav log numbers, my distance, time and route, fuel burn, all those numbers will update automatically. Uh, I can do the same thing with altitudes. So uh, in, I can go into the altitude advisor, which is the bottom left-hand corner of the flight plan drawer where it says 27,000, and I can select an altitude graphically that way. Or if I know the exact altitude I want to fly this route out, I, I can just type it into the flight plan drawer. So I can type in this example 25,000. And when I do that and I hit return on my keyboard, you can see that button in the left-hand corner, bottom left, has changed back to 25,000. Uh, it recognized that I wanted to fly at that altitude. My time and fuel estimates and everything like that will update automatically as well. So there's just a couple different uh, basic ways to um, enter different types of waypoints uh, and information about your route, your route directly into the flight plan drawer. Next, I'd like to talk about uh, interacting with route bubbles themselves. So we can obviously enter uh, different route elements and they show up as bubbles, but you can then tap and interact with the bubbles that you've entered. So here I have a route uh, entered from uh, Reno to Aspen. And each of these little bubbles, uh, the reason really that we, we made them bubbles to begin with is because they are interactive. Um, they're, they're, they're meant to look like buttons because they really are buttons. You can tap on them and do things with them. So in this case, let's say I wanted to get some information about Reno. Well, uh, I could tap on Reno on the map, obviously, or I could just go into my flight plan drawer and tap on that, that Reno route bubble there. And when I do that, I get a bunch of different options here. Up at the top of the screen, uh, in the top of the menu, there's three horizontal actions. Show on map, the green action, that will basically center the map view on whatever waypoint or airport that you've selected. Direct to will plot a direct route from your current GPS position to that waypoint. And then remove from route will simply remove the bubble from the route. But you can see there's a lot more actions that are available to us. And the actions that you see in the menu will vary based on the type of bubble that you've tapped. So in, in the case of any bubble, airports, waypoints, whatever, you ha always have insert before actions. So if you needed to quickly insert uh, a waypoint or multiple waypoints before or after this one, you could select that from the list. ForeFlight will prompt you with a little box that comes up and asks you to enter the, air the waypoints you wish to insert. You can type them in, hit the insert button, and they'll be inserted in the appropriate place in the route. Another interesting action that's available if you tap on a, a, a bubble that is an airport is the select departure action. So there's lots of ways to select um, departures in ForeFlight. You can, for example, select them from the procedure advisor and do it graphically that way. Uh, but you can also do it this way by tapping on the airport and simply saying select departure You'll get a new slide in view that shows you all the available departures out of that airport that you've entered. And you can tap on one of those departures and it will add it to your route and fill in the bubble for you in your route in the appropriate place. Another really quick shortcut here to pull up a procedure for any airport is to tap on the bubble and then select the show plate action. And if you tap that, you'll get a list of all of the procedures that are available into and out of that airport. So for example, if I wanted to quickly pull up the airport diagram for Reno, I could tap on airport diagram here. And if that uh, procedure is geo-referenced, ForeFlight will actually put it right on the map for you automatically. So you don't even have to lose your context. It'll put, put it right where you were on the map, which is really useful. Uh, in the case of airport diagrams specifically, you can actually save a, a step. And instead of going into show plate and selecting airport diagram, we've brought that option up to the top level of the menu. So you can select show airport diagram and it'll put it right on the map in one tap, which is really handy. The next one is new. And this is called 3D view and it's a way to visualize um, airports and actually now any point on the planet in 3D. I'm gonna make you wait a few minutes to see that. We're gonna come back to it in a second because I have a couple different examples I wanna show of that. The show full screen option is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Basically, if you select that, ForeFlight will take the airport that uh, you've selected, in this case, Reno, and it will 
bump you over to the airports tab in the bottom left hand corner and display the airport in full screen on that tab. So it's a little shortcut. Uh, I mentioned, you know, de depending on the bubble that you tap on, the options might vary. So in this case, um, this is the Zephyr 6 departure out of Reno. I've uh, tapped on that in the in the flight plan drawer. I can change that departure uh, by tapping uh, on the departure itself and then saying change departure and I can select a new one out of that list as well. I can also pull up the plate for this departure um, just by tapping on show plate. And if the departure is uh, not geo-referenced, it'll put you over on the plates view and you can view it in full screen. If it is geo-referenced, it'll actually overlay it on top of the map for you. A couple other options here. Uh, in this case, this waypoint MVA, um, you can see uh, I have a replace option. So I can tap on replace and actually change that waypoint to something else and that will replace it with whatever I enter. It's really useful if you mistyped a waypoint or something and um, just want to quickly switch it out with something else. Obviously, we have the insert before and after actions, but the one at the bottom, a long track offset, is really handy. And this is one that I, I think maybe a lot of customers aren't even aware of uh, and how useful it can be. A long track offset is a great way to insert a synthetic waypoint, so sort of a, a fake waypoint, not a real aeronautical um, uh, waypoint, but one that's just relevant to your flight, along the track, along the leg that's coming uh, to MBA at any predefined distance you want. So I'll show you how it works. So I'll select MVA and then I'll select a long track offset. And when I select that, I get a little box and ForeFlight says, uh, okay, what distance before, AKA West of MVA, do you wanna insert this synthetic waypoint? So I'll say 20 miles and I'll type that with my keyboard and then I will select the insert option. And when I do that, two things happen. We can see that a new bubble has been entered uh, before MVA. It says 20 before MVA, followed by obviously the MVA waypoint. And then down here at the bottom, I get the synthetic waypoint that's plotted out right on my uh, on my route line. So this is really useful um, if you want to do certain things um, prior to coming up on a waypoint, prior to coming up on uh, an airport, that sort of thing. Um, it's something I use actually all the time, uh, and it's really handy. Another really uh, great use of these bubbles in the flight plan drawer is for activating procedures. So if I go to an example here, so I have a, um, an ILS procedure um, into this airport, Chicago Executive Airport. Uh, you can see that I, oh, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a GPS uh, approach, I should say, into Chicago Executive. I can see up here in the bubble, I have that GPS approach entered. Um, and I did that by using the procedure advisor. And if I tap on that bubble, I have a couple different options here. Uh, the plate is already on the screen. So in this case, um, instead of show plate, my option is now hide plate. That's a quick way to remove it. But the two options that I wanna talk about today uh, when it comes to GPS or ILS or any approach and the bubble that's associated with it is first this option, activate approach. If I select activate approach, ForeFlight will draw, um, will activate the leg to my initial approach fix for me automatically um, and basically simplify the, the actual screen for me, which is really, really handy. The second option, which is even more useful, is activate vectors to final. So say you're getting vectored around um, prior to uh, beginning an approach um, and, and now you're cleared for the approach. If you select activate vectors to final, ForeFlight will draw uh, two things. It will draw an intercept course from your current GPS position to the final approach course, to the uh, final approach fix. And it will draw a slightly transparent magenta line that extends off of the airport through the procedure um, on the final approach course. And so this is just a really great way to orient yourself um, and get a better situational awareness of where you are relative to the approach itself. Okay, I teased 3D view uh, a few minutes ago. I wanna go back to that now. 3D view is something we've been working on for a while. Um, we heard from customers that they wanted a better way to visualize airports, um, whether that was uh, terrain nearby um, or um, you know any, any sort of um, entry information they needed um, to better situate themselves when they're coming to an airport. One thing I think a lot of customers don't realize is um, Every ForeFlight subscription comes with a built-in worldwide Jeppesen obstacle and terrain database. You don't have to be a Jeppesen customer to get it. It's built into every ForeFlight subscription, regardless of whether you're a Jepp subscriber. And there's lots of really interesting features we've been able to build with this Jeppesen uh, terrain database. Um, but one of the latest features is this 3D view, and I'll show you how it works. 
So going back to our flight plan drawer when we have these route bubbles, I can tap on a bubble and I can select the th show 3D view option. And when I do that, I'll get a view that pops up like this. There's two things happening here. There's the Jeppesen Terrain database, which is being rendered in 3D. And on top of that, we've overlaid up-to-date satellite imagery. It's fully interactive, so I can pinch and zoom and pan around. Those buttons in the top right-hand corner of the view, those will automatically orient you on glide slope uh, on the final approach to whatever runways are available at that airport. So it's a really quick way to get a, a visualization of what it's going to look like as you're approaching that airport. So we access this by going into the flight plan drawer and selecting a 3D view after tapping on a, an airport bubble. But there's other ways to um, access this as well. I can tap on any airport that I see on the map, and I can select 3D view, and that's a quick way to do it. Uh, I can also go to when I'm in the airport's full screen view on the airports tab. I have a, a similar 3D view up here in the top right, and that's available on every airport in the entire planet. Also, in the latest version of ForeFlight, we've extended this 3D view to not just airports, but any arbitrary position. So you can take a finger and you can long press anywhere on the map, anywhere in the world, and you'll get your latitude and longitude up there at the top of the menu. If you tap the 3D button, that will give you the 3D view of wherever you tapped, anywhere on the planet. So it's a feature we're really excited about. We're going to continue to enhance it. There's a lot of really tremendous potential when it comes to 3D visualization of aeronautical information. Um, so stay tuned for future updates on 3D. Let's talk about interacting with the route line as well. Um, so as a general rule, I think you're going you're to hear me say this over and over again. Everything in ForeFlight is interactive. You can tap on pretty much anything in the app to get more information about it. And so we did that with the route bubbles and the flight plan drawer, but we can do it with the line, the actual route line on the map itself. The most basic example of this, of course, is touch planning, where I can bend my route line and select a different waypoint um, and change my route uh, sort of graphically like that. We call that touch planning. Uh, but there's a few other uh, ways to do this as well. I can interact directly with the route line and get information about elements in my route by simply tapping on them. So, for example, if I wanted information about this uh, SAKES waypoint that's coming up here uh, ahead of my aircraft, I could tap on that SAKES waypoint, and I get this view here, and it shows me a ton of information. I can go direct to it, remove it from my route. I can do the long track offset right here just by tapping on the waypoint. I can see the magnetic variation at that point, the coordinates to the waypoint, uh, the bearing to it, that sort of information. But I can also tap directly on legs. So instead of tapping on like the waypoints that make up my route, if I tap on the space between the waypoints, the legs themselves, so this area right here, I have some information here about that leg itself. I can see how long the leg is, what the course is. Uh, and above that, I have a couple options. I can go direct to the, the next waypoint that follows that leg. I can remove the next waypoint from my route. And I have this option, fly leg. Normally, ForeFlight will change your active leg for you automatically as you're flying. So you'll see your past legs in orange, your current leg in magenta, um, and then future legs in that blue color. But if you were maybe vectored off course or you were flying around, maybe VFR, and you need to uh, then activate the, the next leg manually, you can always do that by tapping on the leg you want and selecting fly leg. And then that leg will now be active in the system. Of course, every type of waypoint along the route is interactive. So in this case, this VOR, I could tap on this, get information about it, its name, its Morse code identifier, its frequency, MAGVAR, bearing two, that sort of thing. And of course, I have all the same actions uh, available at the top. So the ability to go direct to, remove it from my route, that a long track out offset feature, that sort of thing. Also, if I'm flying a route in ForeFlight and that route is composed of airways, so here's an example where I have the J80 airway. Um, you'll notice there's two labels uh, on each of the legs, each of the segments that make up this airway of my route. Each of the labels has the name of the airway as well as the MEA information for that segment of the airway. And I can then tap on either of these black labels that I see and get more information about them. So what the course is, what, what that leg is part of, in this case, the Airway J80, and also the MEA for that area. You can also tap on Airways off route. Again, everything is interactive. So if I wanted to get information about this airway that's not on my route, but that's just north of my route, all I would have to do is tap on it, and I'll get the information for it. The frequency stamps are interactive as well. So in this case, uh, zooming into this area here, I can see the frequency 134.5, but I can tap on that, 
and I can see uh, with the center that controls it, what the sector name is, um, and any additional frequencies that are available in that area. All right, so that, that was uh, really useful for interacting with routes that you've manually built. I wanna talk about generating routes as well. In ForeFlight, we can generate routes with a tool we call Route Advisor. That's this button in the flight plan drawer along the right-hand side of the screen. And you can open this up and um, you look at a lot of different types of routes from your departure to your destination that you've entered. Uh, you can look at ATC cleared routes. You can look at um, any published preferred routes. Uh, you can look at recently cleared routes uh, and also what we call the recommended route, which is up here. Recommended route is um, the computed optimum time and fuel route from A to B based on the current winds and your aircraft's performance. And you can very easily select a route uh, and then tap the select route button at the bottom to add it to your actual flight plan. I'm not gonna go too, depth, too much in depth uh, on the, the route generation today. Um, what I'd like to focus on a little bit more is something that I think a lot of customers overlook. And that's this section at the top of the screen. This is what we call route constraints. So if you're generating a recommended route, it's going to look at um, your, the aircraft's performance that you have entered and figure out what the best altitude to fly is and what the best route is at that altitude. But you can modify the minimum and maximum altitudes that ForeFlight will recommend a route for you at. And you can do that by tapping on that, uh, that settings area there where it says the altitudes. And if you do that, you'll get this view, the altitude constraints view. So there's two fields, the minimum and maximum. By default, the maximum will be set to the ceiling of whatever aircraft you entered. But you can change this. So for example, if I wanted to fly this route, Reno to Aspen, at a much lower altitude for whatever reason, or maybe I didn't want to fly it um, below a minimum altitude, I could enter those altitudes here. So I could select instead of 41,000, I could type maybe 15,000 as my maximum altitude that I want to fly this route at. And when I go back to the main route advisor view, the route that's generated now takes that constraint uh, into effect. So it's, it's generating a route that's going to be um, a legitimate route at 15,000 that's best for this aircraft. And you can see at the top here, you can always see what the constraints are that are currently being applied to the routes up at the top. It's always uh, always up to date based on what you've entered. Next thing I'd like to talk about is procedure selection. Um, so again, we were just on this routes button here, the route advisor. The one just uh, above that is the procedure advisor button. And procedure advisor, uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, it's one of my favorite features in ForeFlight. It's a really quick graphical way to select procedures. So that's departures, arrivals, approaches, even traffic pattern entries into and out of any airport. And you tap on the procedure button, you'll see any of the departures, arrivals, approaches, and traffic patterns into and out of your departure and destination airports. And those are listed along the side here. So as an example, uh, if I wanted to shoot an approach into Aspen, I could select the approach option and ForeFlight will show me all of the approaches that are available. It's gonna highlight um, which approaches are best based on the latest uh, wind information from that airport. Let's say I wanted to fly the uh, RNAV Zulu for runway 15. I could select that. And when I do that, the view on the right changes and it shows me all of the uh, initial approach fixes that are relevant to that specific approach. So I could select one of the initial approach fixes or I could just select vectors to final, which will just draw um, basically an intercept line for me to intercept the final approach course for the procedure. And then I can select add to route at the bottom and that will be added to my, my route uh, in the flight plan drawer. So I'll get a bubble for that procedure. The thing that I wanted to highlight though uh, in this webinar today was the last option, traffic pattern. I think this is something a lot of uh, users overlook. Um, and it's it's actually a feature that I think is really great to situate yourself uh, and figure out um, the best way that to enter the pattern at any given airport. Now, obviously when we're, when we're entering the traffic pattern at any airport, our eyes need to be outside, right? Um, but even when it comes to planning or even when you're a ways out from the airport, just using the traffic pattern visualization feature is a really great way to quickly situate yourself and it's a really nice sanity check as well. I can tap on the traffic pattern entry and I'll see the any other the runways that are available at this airport. So in this case, um, for Aspen, it looks like the best wind is favoring the runway 15, so I'll select that. And um, it lets me choose between left traffic and right traffic. Uh, in this case, the left traffic is the default option. And I can select the actual uh, entry that I want to make. So let's do something a little fancy. We'll do a right traffic cross midfield teardrop entry. And if I select that, I get a preview of what that type of entry would look like if I were to fly it. I can then select the add to route button at the bottom of the screen. And ForeFlight will actually take that traffic pattern entry procedure and visualize it for you at the end of your route, right on the map. 
So that's a feature that I like to use occasionally just to situate myself um, before I actually enter the traffic pattern. Okay, uh, next up I'd like to talk uh, a little bit about some of the en route features in the product. Um, little tips and tricks and shortcuts that are gonna help you save time uh, when you're actually flying uh, with ForeFlight Mobile. Let's talk a little bit about the aeronautical map and how we can customize it. For those who aren't familiar with the aeronautical map, it's the top left option, the first option in the layer selector on the map view. The aeronautical map is what we call a data-driven map, and it's really the future of aeronautical uh, and aviation in general uh, in terms of mapping technology. Uh, basically, the difference between the aeronautical map and another type of chart you might look at, like a VFR sectional or an IFR and route chart, is the map is drawn on the fly, on the device, from raw aeronautical data. So if you compare this to a traditional VFR sectional or IFR and route chart, which is really a scanned version of the paper chart, there's a lot of benefits to going with a data-driven option like the aeronautical chart. For one, um, the amount of data is much smaller. Um, it's all stored in a, in a, a database and rendered on, on the fly, so it takes up less space. But because it's data-driven and dynamic, the map can change. It can be customized based on what you want to look at. I'll give you some examples. In the settings menu here at the top of the map view, if I open that up, whenever I have the aeronautical map on, I will get an aeronautical section in the settings menu. And there's a couple different areas here and types and pieces of information you can customize um, that are part of the aeronautical map. I wanna talk about the airspace section today. There's a few interesting features in here. If I tap on airspace, I have a couple different options. One of them is auto highlight. This feature has actually been out for a while. Um, it's off by default, but um, I think can be very useful, especially when flying through a congested airspace. If I turn auto highlight on, you can see it, it might be subtle on the webinar, but you can see the difference there if I switch between the two. Basically what the auto highlight feature is doing is it's looking at the route that you've entered, it's looking at your aircraft's performance, and it's figuring out wh what airspace you're going to be intersecting along this route, and it's automatically dimming the airspace that you won't be intersecting, and it's making the airspace that you will be intersecting brighter to draw your attention to it. The other feature just below that is brand new and it's the hide airspace above feature. Uh, this is a, a feature that um, was built directly based on customer feedback, and it allows you to automatically filter out or remove airspace from the map that is above any given uh, altitude. So for example, I could enter 5,000 with my keyboard here, and it's gonna filter out any airspace uh, above 5,000 feet. When I'm flying, it's important to be aware of whatever filters we've applied to the map. And so in ForeFlight at the bottom right-hand corner of the map view, we can see a little notification that lets us know we've filtered the airspace above 5,000 feet. And I can tap on this notification and I can change that here. I can remove it entirely uh, or modify other aspects about the uh, airspace features of the aeronautical map. Also in that same settings menu, uh, are a bunch of features that we call map overlays. So map overlays are pieces of information that you can visualize on top of whatever map you're looking at. They're not specific to the map itself. They're not really aeronautical data, um, but they're great ways to get uh, better situational awareness about where you are and where your aircraft is trending over time. So again, uh, they're available in the settings menu on the map. So I can go into the map settings button here and I can scroll down in this in this menu and I go to the map overlay section, and these are all the different options. Um, there's two, uh, three actually that I'd like to talk about today. The first is distance rings. This is uh, not a new feature. It's been in the app for a long time now, actually. When I turn distance rings on, uh, I see basically rings that emanate out from my GPS position. Um, and uh, it's a really great feature. I use it all the time. But what I think a lot of customers don't know is this is customizable. These rings um, and the distances or information that they represent can be changed based on your personal preference. And you can customize these rings if you go into the More tab, which is the last tab at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, and then go into the Settings section along the right-hand pane there in the menu, Settings, and then select Distance Rings Style. Now, if you're having a hard time uh, finding the, the relevant setting, uh, you just can't find it, or maybe you're accidentally skipping it over it in the menu, uh, we built a new feature in one of the later versions of ForeFlight to be able to filter the settings view. 
So that's at the top of the screen here. It's a filter. So you can actually type in that search box for what you're looking for in settings, and the settings view will change and filter based on whatever you've entered. So that's a really quick way to find the setting you're looking for. But anyway, you can find distance ring style in the menu and tap on it, and you have these options. So automatic uh, distance is the, the, the default option. That's the one that every new installation of ForeFlight is set to. And basically what this means is the rings will show distances, but as you zoom in and out, those distances will change. So the distances will be, get greater as you zoom farther out on the map. But again, you can change this. So if I go back to the settings menu and that distance ring style uh, menu section, I have a couple different options here. If I don't want the distances to change based on my zoom, if I always want them to be set at specific distances, there's a, a variety of different options for that. Also, a really useful um, option here is time. So instead of the rings representing distances away, they'll represent an amount of time away based on your current GPS ground speed. Automatic will change the rings uh, based on your zoom level, or you can set them to be fixed with the last two options. Also in this menu uh, is track vector. Track vector, when you turn it on, will show you a view that looks like this. It's basically a little worm that comes out from the front of your airplane and it'll trend to the right or to the left uh, and it'll get longer or shorter based on your GPS position if you're turning left or right or speeding up or slowing down. But again, the track vector can be uh, modified. It can be customized um, based on your personal preference. And you can do this again under the More tab in Settings under the Track Vector Length option. So I'll tap into that and you can see I have a lot of different options here. I have time options in seconds um, as well as in minutes. And then I have distance, a fixed distance option as well. So um, take a look at those settings and play with the, the one that you feel is most useful to the way you fly. Okay, the last uh, map overlay feature I wanted to talk about today uh, is the breadcrumbs feature. This is brand new um, uh, by uh, popular request. We heard from lots of customers that this was a feature they really, really wanted, and we were really excited to get it out um, in one of the more recent versions of ForeFlight. When I turn breadcrumbs on, I am going to see a little green line that comes out of the back of my airplane as I'm flying, and it's going to be rendered in real time on the map. This is a feature that's really useful um, if you're just trying to see where you've been uh, on the flight, we have customers who do things like search and rescue patterns or pipeline surveys, or they want to make sure that they're, they're, they've been flying correctly over the, the right patterns. And this is a really, really valuable tool uh, for them. But like most things in ForeFlight, the breadcrumb itself is interactive. So I can tap on it, tap anywhere on that green line, and I get a little menu. And it tells me how, how long the breadcrumb has been recording, the distance traveled along the breadcrumb, uh, what my average ground speed was, disregard that ground speed there. I was doing that in a simulator uh, to speed up the, uh, <laughs> the screenshot process a little bit. Um, and also, I have a couple different uh, options below there. I can reset it. So when I tap reset, it's actually going to remove the breadcrumb from the map, and it's going to start a new breadcrumb from my current GPS position moving forward. Or I can save it as a track log. If I save it as a track log, ForeFlight will actually go uh, save this recording under the More tab in the bottom right-hand corner in the Track Log section. So these are all the track logs I recorded in the past, and that's a really quick way to just save the breadcrumb so that I can review it later. Uh, and the Track Log feature in ForeFlight is great. It lets you uh, review routes in 3D and Google Earth. It's really, really neat. Okay, another uh, feature I'd like to talk about today is Profile View. Profile's been out for a while, but we've been gradually enhancing it over time. I want to show you some of the latest features of the profile view. So the profile view is accessible in the flight plan drawer. So to get to it, you'll need to go up to the FPL button in the top right, uh, left-hand corner of the screen, and then select the profile option. Um, normally, this defaults to the edit option, which is where the bubbles are that we were looking at earlier. But you just got to go two tabs over to the profile option. And when you do that, you'll see a view that looks like this. Um, lots of different things in this view. Uh, we're showing now all the waypoints along the route. That's a, a, a newer feature. It's fully interactive, so you can move your altitude slider up and down. We automatically insert top of climb and top of descent into the, into the profile for you. You can pan around. You can tap on anything. So I can tap on airspace like this MOA that I see. Then you can see the map will zoom automatically to where that is. This red TFR, I can tap on that, see where that is along my route there. Um, but another really useful feature of the profile is I can take a finger and I can tap and hold on the profile. And you'll see I get a little green dot. 
That's a great way to kind of put a little target on something I'm interested in. And then I get a corresponding dot along my route line. And that's a great way to, you know, if you're trying to pinpoint um, maybe a ridge line or an obstacle or something like that, it's a quick way to locate it uh, from profile view and sort of transpose that onto the map view itself. Another uh, feature that I think a lot of customers maybe aren't aware of is how the profile view interacts with the ruler. So for those who haven't used the ruler before, if you take two fingers, like your thumb and your forefinger, and you put them down on the screen at the same time, you can drag those fingers around and you can measure distances between your thumb and your forefinger. And um, the ruler also provides some information. So it provides you um, the, the course distance, uh, time, estimated fuel burn, um, based on your current ground speed in either direction, from, from left to right or right to left. Um, and you can see those in the labels that are on uh, each side of the ruler. But I th think what a lot of people don't know is that when you have the ruler on the screen, if you then open up the profile view at the same time, you're now measuring not the, not the terrain and obstacles and airspace along your route or ahead of your airplane. You're measuring it along the ruler itself. So it's a great way to measure off route where things are. And you can see that green dot method that works here too. So you can see where terrain and obstacles are along that ruler. So the two work together. And that's something we try to do at Forflight is we try to build features that uh, integrate with each other and that become more valuable um, by using them with other things that are available in the app. Uh, another good example of, of a feature like that is synthetic vision. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with synthetic vision in ForeFlight, um, it's been in the app for a while, but like Profile, we've been enhancing it lately. Synthetic vision is available in the top left corner. You can tap the, looks like a little attitude indicator button, and you get a synthetic vision window here. And synthetic vision, based on your GPS signal, will give you GPS ground speed, GPS altitude, vertical speed, GPS course. And if you have an attitude heading and reference system or AHARS device attached, such as the one built into the Sentry device or the Stratus device, um, a lot of different devices we support, um, you'll see pitch and bank as well. But what I think a lot of people don't realize is that synthetic vision is also interactive, like everything else in the product. And so I can actually uh, tap on synthetic vision uh, with my finger, and I can drag around. I get a little viewport there at the bottom, and you can see a little timer that moves around the circle. So after six seconds, if I don't touch the view for six seconds, it'll center itself automatically. You can also tap on information you see in synthetic vision. For example, an airport, like, like the one ahead of us in this case, I can tap on that airport and I can get information from it. I could even go into the 3D view for that airport directly from this menu. Okay, a few uh, additional small tips and tricks I'd like to, to cover. One of them is customizing the instruments that are available in the app. So uh, the instrument panel is available uh, via this button here. It looks like a little gauge. And when you tap on that, you'll get this bar that comes up along the bottom of the screen. And the bar has lots of different types of information in it, uh, really useful information. Uh, but I think what a lot of people don't realize is that you can customize what type of information and where it is in that bar. So I can do this by tapping anywhere. So let's say um, that we're in the middle there where it says GPS altitude. Let's say I wanted to change that. I wanted some other type of information to be in that spot. Well, I would just tap on GPS altitude and I get this menu. And it's a long menu. There's a lot of different options here, lots of different types of information um, that you can put in the instrument panel. Um, one of my favorite ones is this option, nearest barrow. So this is going to show you a bit, the nearest barrow reading from whatever uh, station is closest to your own ship position. That's really nice to have. And once you select that, it'll show up in that spot, whatever you tapped on. Another one, nearest airport. So that's going to show you um, the distance and direction and the code of the nearest airport. And again, that'll propagate down to the bottom there. And this one um, came out a little while ago, but is also really handy. This is the descent to destination instrument. So this is based on your current GPS altitude and the route you've entered. This is going to give you the required foot per minute descent to reach your destination airport elevation at arrival. Uh, and so in this case, based on the speed we're flying and the altitude we're flying in this example, we would have needed to descend at 440 feet per minute uh, to reach field elevation at our destination. All right, a few last minute tips here. Um, search, we've really enhanced the search functionality in the product lately. We're trying to build uh, really what we call a, a global search feature. So the idea being, no matter what you're searching for in ForeFlight, no matter where you are in the app, you should be able to find the information you want. And we've been enhancing the search functionality a lot lately. Um, a few quick tips for using search. 
we get a lot of questions about how to go direct to something in Forflight Mobile. And the truth is there's a, there's a variety of ways to do it. You can do it um, tap by tapping on the, the waypoint in your route. You can do it by tapping on the route bubble. Um, you can tap it, do it by tapping directly on the waypoint on the map and selecting direct to. So for example, if you're flying along and ATC cleared us uh, maybe direct Hardy, I would find Hardy here on my map um, and I would tap on the waypoint and then I would select direct to, right? But maybe I can't find it on my map. I don't know where it is. In that case, um, I could do something else. I could use the search box to go direct to. If I know the name of the waypoint, I can go up into the search box. And I can tap in the search box and I can type the letter D, which stands for direct to, and then I can type the space bar. And then I can type the name of the waypoint. So in this case, I could type D Hardy. And you can see the first option that pops up is, is, a, is a route, and it's a direct route from this lat lawn, which is my current GPS ownership position, to Hardy. And I can select that in the list, and then I get an immediate uh, direct to. So D space waypoint is a really quick way to go direct to anything. It works on any waypoint, works on airports, anything. Um, also, uh, a really quick uh, search tip for pulling up procedures. So let's say we're flying into this airport here. Uh, I believe this is Morristown, MMU. Um, and I want to pull up uh, an approach procedure for MMU. Uh, well, I could go into the airports view uh, and I could scroll through the, all the procedures and find it, or I could stay on the maps tab here and I could go up to the search box. And in the search box, I could type the name of the airport and I immediately get some results. So I get the airport itself. And if I tapped on this, I'd get information about the airport. And I also get a procedures section here. So it's, four flights basically automatically suggesting, hey, maybe you want to fly an approach uh, into this airport. Here is how to look at all the procedures for this airport. And I could tap on that, and I see all the procedures for the airport. And then I could tap on the procedure I want, and four flight puts it on the map for me. But we can take it a step further. Let's say I know this, the name, the specific procedure I want to fly. Well, I can go back up into the search box. I can type the airport, and then the type of procedure. Maybe I'm going to fly an RNAV approach into uh, into Morristown. Forflight will filter the results at the top level for me. So now it's showing me all of the RNAV procedures into this airport. And I could then select one of these procedures and it'll put it on the map. So those are a few search tips um, uh, that uh, are really designed to help you save time uh, when using the product. All right, so uh, the last thing I want to talk about today uh, is something that just came out, brand new. Uh, you know, at Forflight, we, uh, we're pilots ourselves. So we build an app that we want to use, that's useful to us, and that we think will be useful um, to pilots around the world. And as pilots, we bring along passengers. And a common question that we hear from passengers is, are we there yet? Um, and, you know, we realized there's got to be a way to, to allow passengers to answer this question for themselves. There's so much technology built into ForeFlight that tells pilots if they're there yet. Why can't we show passengers if they're there yet as well? And so we put our heads together and we came up with a brand new product, a new app. We call it ForeFlight Passenger. And it's a free app and it's available on iPhone and iPad. And anyone can download it. So if you wanted to get it, all you would need to do is go into the App Store and search for ForeFlight Passenger, and you would tap that Get button, and it would download to your device. Uh, and then you're going to see a view that looks like this. So maybe you're taking um, your, your husband or your wife, girlfriend, children, whatever, on a flight. And uh, before the flight, you have them download ForeFlight Passenger on their personal iPhone or their personal iPad. And they can bring it along with them, and they can open it up uh, when they get in the airplane. Then you, as the pilot in the latest version of ForeFlight, can open up ForeFlight, and you can go to the More tab, and you can go to the Passenger section, and you can enable and start Passenger. And when you do this, a couple magical things are going to happen. ForeFlight is going to start monitoring any changes you make to your flight in the flight on the maps view. So any reroutes you're making, any changes, that sort of thing. Anything that happens, any route change, um, you know, ETA change, whatever, are going to be wirelessly transmitted to the passenger app. And the really amazing thing about this is it doesn't require that these applications be on the same Wi-Fi network. It's using some near-field communication technology that basically just works out of the box. There's nothing, you, there's no instructions you have to give your passengers. Just download the app, open it up, and as soon as you open up ForeFlight and enable 
uh, passenger, it'll start broadcasting the route. And so they're going to see time remaining, um, ETA and local time at your destination. They're going to see their ground speed, GPS altitude, uh, their magnetic course, and they're going to see the route and their, their uh, position along that route. You'll notice on the right hand side here, um, there's a status. So we can see that the, this version of ForeFlight is currently sending route updates to passengers when it last sent an update and how long it's going to be sending updates for. And we can see on the passenger side, the latest route, again, based on whatever our active route in ForeFlight Mobile is on the map view. I can always disable the passenger mode um, and that will stop the broadcast to any passengers that are currently listening uh, through the application. So that's passenger, we're really excited about it. It's a product that we're gonna to continue to enhance just like we enhance ForeFlight all the time. Um, and we think you're really gonna enjoy it. So check it out. Uh, if you want more information, it's a forefleight.com slash passenger, links there to download it, more information about how it works. So uh, that concludes our tips and tricks presentation for today. I wanted to give you some information about how to learn more about ForeFlight. Um, the first thing in this list is the pilot's guide. That's available actually in the application itself. If you go to the documents tab and then the catalog and, and the ForeFlight section, you can download the pilot's guide and have it with you in the app. Um, you can also access it on our website on ForeFlight.com. There's basically one chapter for every feature um, and it's updated for every release. The second option here is our videos page, foreflight.com slash videos. Um, on that page, you can look at uh, both um, introductory courses. We have 30 minute introductory courses for folks who are brand new to ForeFlight. We have intermediate courses if you wanna learn more about it. And then for every release, we make little three to five minute videos about all the new features that walk you through what they are and how they work. So that's a great way if you're more of a visual learner. There's also foreflight.com slash support. That's how you can uh, download the pilot's guide from there, browse our knowledge base, frequently asked questions. If you always want to keep up to date what the latest ForeFlight releases are, check out foreflight.com slash releases. That's a history of all the things we've released recently and all the features that are in them. And again, you can always send us an email 24-7, team at foreflight.com. Our entire support team um, are real people. They're real pilots and they're ForeFlight experts and they're standing by ready to help. So I hope you found this webinar useful and uh, hand it back to you, Eric. Ryan, thank you so much. A lot of great information, a lot of good questions coming in, as, uh, too. So we'll get right to the questions. Um, and I'll try to tie the questions together in, in kind of themes to, to answer multiple questions maybe at once. Ryan, one of the more popular questions throughout the night was um, our kind of attendees tonight trying to wrap their head around what features of the many features you've discussed are available at, at what subscription options. Um, so right. I know that's maybe not an easy question to answer, but I guess is there an abbreviated version maybe you could give or, or direct people to some more Absolutely. information to figure out what features are available with what subscription level? Yeah, great question. So, you know, at ForeFlight, we have three subscription level levels. We have uh, Basic Plus, Pro Plus, and Performance Plus. And the reason we have three subscription levels is because we realize that different features are uh, of varying levels of, of value to different types of pilots, right? Um, and so in every ForeFlight release that we do, uh, we try to include new features for each of those tiers uh, of subscription levels. So in regards to some of the features I was talking about today, um, Pretty much all the things I talked about today are available to, to all subscription levels from basic to performance. So things like breadcrumbs and, and stuff like that. Um, the profile view that that where you can visualize your route and terrain and airspace, that's a pro subscription. And the 3D view that I was showing you, that's, um, that's a performance level subscription. But if you wanna get um, basically a, a breakdown of what features are in what subscriptions at what price levels, you can go to foreflight.com slash pricing and we have a really easy page there that has three columns for each of the subscriptions and each of the features that's in each of those subscriptions. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, another great question. Is there a way for users or how could users identify their own unique areas of interest? Uh, you know, one example that was cited was, you know, like a flight school practice area. Is there a way to identify that in some way and overlay that on ForeFlight? Yeah, great question. There, there absolutely is. ForeFlight has a, a newer feature that we call content packs. And the idea behind content packs is, in addition to all the aeronautical information that's built into the app, that's published by ForeFlight or by the FAA or whatever, you can bring your own content into the app. And by content, I mean, you can bring a, a chart that you have, maybe um, it's like a local area procedure that you have. You can bring um, 
a shape or like a polygon or a series of shapes or waypoints, you can import those into the application and you can share those content packs with other users who you might, they, who might find it valuable. So um, a good example is, you know, where I learned to fly, I learned to fly at the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, North Dakota. It's a huge um, flying school, lots of practice areas all around. And when I learned to fly there, we would have our paper sectionals and we'd have highlighters. We basically trace out the practice areas on the VFR sectionals. With content packs, you don't need to do that anymore. What you can do is you can go into Google Maps and draw out the practice areas and then import them into ForeFlight and visualize them as a layer right in the map. Um, we didn't have enough time today to get into exactly how to do that, but it's actually quite straightforward. And if you want more information on how to import your own polygons and waypoints and charts into the app, check out uh, foreflight.com support. We have a whole um, page, a walkthrough on how to import your own content like that. Excellent, thank you. Uh, with respect to um, the flight plan drawer and applying a specific route to like a specific tail number, I believe this was very early on in the presentation, but you discussed the ability to add a tail number at the end of the flight plan description. It, does it have to be, does the tail, can the tail number be inserted anywhere? Does it have to be at the beginning or does it have to be at yeah. the end? Yeah, great question. The answer is it can be anywhere. So what happens when you uh, enter any sort of information into the flight plan drawer is behind the scenes, the, the four flight uh, supercomputer is basically parsing. It's, it's reading the information you're entering and it's figuring out what it is. And it's really good at doing that. So the, obviously the order that you put your route waypoints in matters, but where you put the tail number or the altitude, that doesn't matter. You can put that anywhere. Several attendees interested in the ability to do um, vertical navigation calculations. You know, you get a crossing restriction or you want to be here at this specific altitude. Is that yeah. been, does that ability exist within ForeFlight? Has it been contemplated? That's kind of the... Yeah. Uh, so great question. And, you know, there, there's probably two things I talked about today that may, might have spurred that question. The first is that the route line and the profile, right, with top of climb and top of descent calculated. And the sec second thing was that... Uh, required uh, descent in feet per minute instrument um, to get to your destination. Those are basically, um, that's the extent of vertical navigation type features we have in the product today, but we are always working on new stuff. And um, I absolutely hear those customers loud and clear on, on vertical navigation uh, features and how useful those would be in the product. So I would say stay tuned um, to future four flight releases because we're always cooking up new stuff. Ah, excellent. Um, related to the, the ability to do the VFR traffic pattern entries, um, there was an attendee that had a question about, you know, what type of consideration is given there to obstacles or terrain and how you might view that. Yeah, yeah great question. So um, if there is published uh, right traffic preference for an airport, we will uh, denote that in the traffic pattern advisor. However, the traffic pattern advisor beyond that is not aware of obstacle clearance or terrain clearance um, considerations. So that would be on the pilot individually to uh, make sure that they're abiding by um, whatever they need to to stay clear of obstacles and terrain. Got it. Couple questions related to displaying the uh, approach charts uh, on four flight and also overlaying weather. And I'm paraphrasing here, but essentially the question is related to you know, is there a way, you know, to set the weather so that you're not obstructing uh, important chart information? Yeah, a great question. So, you, you know, the plates on maps feature is really great, right? Because it allows you to take what you're looking at and then visualize an approach on top of that, whether it's an IFR in route and an ILS on top of that, or an aeronautical map and uh, maybe a sitter star on top of that. Um, so, how we like to think of that at ForeFlight is we have our base layer, which is whatever map we've selected. And then on top of that, you can put a procedure, like a SID or a star and approach. And on top of that, you can put weather, right? Like radar or satellite, that sort of thing. But of course, if you're putting weather on top of a procedure, then the procedure is going to be obstructed, right? So um, we built a feature called uh, basically weather transparency that allows you to adjust how transparent that top level is, how transparent that weather layer is. And if you go into the settings menu, that's the, the map settings menu we were looking at earlier, the little settings wheel uh, on the maps view that has um, all the customization for the aeronautical map. If you go into that menu and scroll to the bottom, as long as you have a weather um, uh, layer on, like you've turned on radar, if you go into that menu and scroll to the bottom, you'll get a slider, a transparency slider, and you can adjust the transparency 
of the weather so you can see through the weather and onto the procedure itself. And to take it one step further, if you have a plate on the map, and maybe you have a VFR sectional under that or an IFR and route chart under that, you can tap on the plate on the map itself and you get a similar menu with a similar slider and you can adjust the transparency of the plate too. So you have dual control of the tr transparency of the weather and the plate itself. Excellent. Um, we'll just two uh, quick questions and, and one came up several times um, and I, it's kind of, I guess, in the short term related to uh, for flight now part of the Boeing family. Uh, are there yeah. any immediate changes that any users should expect related to that news? Yeah, great question. So, um, you know, so for flight and, and Boeing announced um, that for flight is now part of the Boeing family um, uh, a little while ago. Uh, it's something we're super excited about. I, I think that a lot of customers might not realize that for flight and Boeing have been working together quite closely for really the past two years. Um, for flight is helping out with the design and the engineering of um, the Jeppesen Flight Deck Pro product, which is targeted primarily at commercial aviation. Um, and so uh, that, that product's been ongoing for, for some time now. Um, in regards to the future of ForeFlight and the impacts that that's going to have, there will be no changes. So um, we don't have any planned changes in terms of pricing or anything like that. Um, we're continuing to grow and we're continuing to increase our rate of hiring, actually. So if you, anyone is interesting, interested in opportunities at ForeFlight, check out foreflight.com slash careers. Um, but otherwise, we expect to keep up our pace of innovation, same team um, and same passion for general aviation. Great to see that some of our attendees are planning on being at Sun and Fun, which starts next week on Tuesday. So several people interested, Ryan, in what type of learning opportunities might be available next week. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm going to be there uh, all week. Um, always exciting to go to Sun and Fun. Uh, we have three uh, seminars that we're doing throughout the week um, across various days. We're doing a fundamentals presentation, which will be an introductory course into ForeFlight Mobile. It's about an hour. We're doing a power users course, which is more of an intermediate advanced um, hour. And then we're doing a what's new presentation, which is going to go over only the features that have been released within the past um, 60, 90 days. Um, you can find the full schedule for all of those uh, forums on our website at foreflight.com slash SNF, Sierra November Foxtrot. Great. Ryan, thank you so much. We are right at our time. Uh, a lot of great information. Just a quick reminder that we did record the presentation. It will be available in its entirety uh, via Sporties YouTube, also in our archive at sporties.com slash webinars. While you are there, be sure to check up, check out uh, our remaining schedule for 2019. A lot of great learning opportunities. Um, we, you know, speaking on behalf of both Sporties and ForeFlight, we'd love to see it Sun and Fun next week. Uh, ForeFlight, in addition to those learning opportunities, they will be located in a big way in Hangar C. Sporties will be located in a tent location outside of Hangar A. There will be an opportunity for um, a very short and quick um, survey at the end of the presentation. Always appreciate your feedback opportunity to talk about the presentation, but also give us some ideas for any future presentations and topics you may wish to see. So with that, we are going to uh, bid you a very good evening. Uh, for Ryan McBride and the entire Four Flight team, I'm Eric Gradke with Sporties. Happy you could join us, and we'll hope to see you back sometime very soon. Safe flying to all.